So we're starting uh, in a reclining, a reclining Baddha Konasana. You're using either, as I said, a pillow or a couch pillow, a couple of throw pillows, a folded up blanket or two, or if you're lucky enough to have one of these delightful yoga bolsters, you're using that. We're laying back to set the feet together, the bottoms of the feet touching on the bolster and touching one another and the knees are apart. So if you're working, you have no props and you just want to put your legs directly on the floor, you can do that. It's just that you um, may feel that it's more intense in the lower back or more intense in the inner groin. So getting comfortable here for a few moments. And if it's okay to close the eyes, go ahead and do so. Letting the arms relax wherever they feel best to be placed for a few moments of tuning into the self, tuning into the body. And as you lay here, I invite you to feel your breath. You can check in with the quality of your breath. Does it feel like the breath is shallow or stuck? Does it feel accessible like you can take a deep breath? Does it feel like the breath is mostly in the chest or is it also in the abdomen? And often merely by just paying attention to our breath, we're able to notice that it slows down. And so as you feel the breath slowing, you can then coax gently a little bit deeper inhalation. And a more complete exhalation. And deepening the breath can signal to the body that you're seeking to settle, that you're seeking to move from active or fight or flight mode to a bit more passive rest and digest mode. Taking a few moments to be interested in the breath, be curious about the breath and how the body is breathing. Helpful to relax the jaw and the tongue if there's any tension there. And to relax the eyes. Bring your awareness to your lower back to notice if there's any holding there. And if you can utilize the exhalations to help relax the back towards the ground. You may notice that as you work to relax the lower back, the breathing becomes a little bit easier. We'll take one hand near the heart. You can lead your elbows to relax on the mat. So one hand near the heart and one hand on the belly. I'm just connecting to what might have inspired you to come to the practice today, a prayer for yourself or for someone you love or for a group at large. Just take a moment to set those prayers and intentions. Um. And 
bringing the hands to the heart center. Just gently tucking the chin towards the chest, feel the length along the neck and the upper back. And I know we don't often ohm here laying on our backs, but let's take one ohm gently here together. Deep breath in. Using the hands to bring the legs back together and in towards the chest. So squeeze the knees in, hanging onto the shins or the thighs. Rock the back, back side to side a little bit. And you can feel that lower back getting a stretch, I hope. Let the knees come apart from one another. As you continue to hold on to the shins, and then we're gonna draw circles with the legs. So let them stir out, in, and then towards the chest. Let them stir out, away from your chest, and then squeeze them in. Out, around, and in. Out, around, and in. Reverse the circles. So together they move away from your body. Then you open them apart from one another, squeeze them up towards the shoulders, and then in towards each other. Away from you, apart from one another, in towards the shoulders, and together. One more time like that. Away, opening the knees apart, bringing the knees up towards the shoulders, and in, good. Take a deep breath to squeezing the knees towards the body. Lift your head off the ground and give your upper back and neck a little stretch as you sort of squeeze into a tight little ball here, pressing the lower back into the ground. And then release your head and shoulders back down. Take your, um, your feet back to the mat. If your prop is there, you can kind of just push it or negotiate it with your legs. I just kind of push it forward on the mat and stretch it long so the legs are long on the mat. Take your hands, interlace your fingers right in front of your chest. Notice which ring, which pointer finger is on top. Mine is the right, so notice for you. Then as you turn the hands inside out, reach the arms overhead long. Then flex the toes towards your face and stretch the whole body. Take a couple breaths here. Enjoying whatever feels good about it. Maybe kind of opening through the waist. You might even wiggle a little left and right to exaggerate the feeling. And then relax the legs, bring the hands back in front of your chest and switch so that the opposite pointer finger is on top. And then flip your hands back inside out over head, stretching the elbows long. Pull the toes towards your face, and again, you're stretching kind of the inner heel of the hand and the heels of the feet all the way apart from one another. And just stretch it up, belly wide open. Take another deep breath or two here, depending on how quickly you're breathing. And then relax the arms by your side and bend the knees so that the feet are standing down on the ground. And the feet and the knees and legs are hip distance apart. I kind of have to lift and organize my pelvis to feel more comfortable. So if you need to do that, right, take a moment. And then take your palms, your hands, and press them on the tops of your thighs, kind of near the crease of your hip and press your thighs away from you. So your elbows may or may not be able to go all the way straight. Just kind of lengthening, a little traction in the lower back. Be gentle here if there's any sensitivity in that lower back. Take a deep breath and as you exhale, go ahead and relax the pressure, bring the arms back down by your sides. So notice your lower back in this moment. Hopefully it's sort of a little bit free. There's a little bit of space between your lower back and the ground. And then I want you to press your lower back gently into the mat and exhale. 
And then as you inhale, lift your lower back gently away from the ground and you'll feel your pelvis tilt the other way. And then as you exhale, a little pressing of the lower back into the ground. This is just rocking the pelvis. It's a little like cat-cow, but we're only moving the lower back. As you inhale, you lift the lower back away from the ground. And take this a few times at your own pace to just rock the pelvis and to utilize the breath as some assistance to the movement. Bringing some blood flow into this area of the body. And again, if you have any real sensitivities here, work this movement very gently so that the movement might have less range of motion. And if your lower back feels really good today, you could play with moving it through a bit of a larger range of motion. Can feel your feet on the ground and maybe even the feet pressing into the mat. Is that helpful? Assistant to moving the pelvis. Just rocking through the sacrum, the bone that's between each of your hip bones. Kind of connecting to your tailbone. All right, the next time you exhale, release everything back to sort of neutral so there's no effort whatsoever. All right, we're gonna bring that feet closer together and cross the right leg over the left so that it's thigh to thigh. So your right thigh is touching your left thigh. And again, if you need a little shift in your pelvis there for comfort, take a moment. We're going to do exactly what we just did, the rocking of the pelvis with our legs like this. So on exhale, connect lower back to mat. On inhale, allow the lower back to lift gently and the pelvis to tilt. On exhale, you're relaxing and pressing the back gently into the mat. And on inhale, you're rocking it away. You can also feel how this affects in your upper back. Even affects your neck. You know, I can feel uh, a sort of a residual effect all the way up the spine that's rocking my head a little bit, kind of lengthening my neck. So, as much as we try to isolate sections of the spine or parts of the body, we're reminded of the wholeness of the body. I like to think in these times of isolation where we're apart from one another that we're reminded that despite the fact that we're apart, we're really still all very deeply interconnected. Allowing the body to teach us about that. All right, the next time you exhale, just relax everything back to neutral. We'll uncross that right leg and cross the left thigh on top of the right. Again, any little movement in the pelvis to get it comfy. And then we're doing exactly what we just did. We're inhaling the pelvis tilts and the lower back lifts away. And as you exhale, you press it down. Remember that you can be as gentle as you need to with this movement. Focusing the body to let go of health tension, you know, trauma. We're all experiencing trauma on some level in this moment, in these times, and taking movement with the body and breathing and really acknowledging that it settles into our physicality really unconsciously. These are the moments to practice with the body to say, okay, I recognize you're having some experiences and inviting the body to move the trauma through without force. Without force. A couple more shifts of the pelvis here. Inhaling and exhaling. All right, the next time 
You inhale, just relax the pelvis, the movement to stillness. Uncross the legs. Walk the feet a little bit apart and let the knees just kind of fall towards each other. And again, I did a little lifting of my pelvis to get it back to comfy. Turning the toes in a little bit. Just noticing the sensations in that lower back, around the pelvis, around the hips. Good, we're gonna walk those feet to be hip distance apart again and take right ankle to cross over left knee. Take the right hand on top of the thigh and press the thigh away. If you want to, you can also put the left hand on the thigh and press both of the thighs away. Traction in that lower back, a little rocking of the legs side to side. Deep breath might come along. Enjoy that if it does. And then we're going to cuddle this figure four in towards the body. See if you can hold on to your left leg. Sometimes you need a little support under your head. A block or a blanket or a throw pillow could help, especially if you're feeling very tight today. We're just going to hold on to the legs and clear some of that tension in that right hip. If any intuitive movement comes along, like you feel like rolling your ankles or moving in some way, always welcome to do that. Rocking. Otherwise, you stay in the stillness. All the while, you stay connected to the breath. Breath keeps you present. It gives your mind something to anchor onto instead of wandering off to the myriad of thoughts, myriad of thoughts that could take it away from the task at hand. I'm going to take one more breath here. And then we'll gently set that left foot down onto the ground. Stretch your right leg up to the ceiling. Roll your ankle around. Stretch through the knee. And then lower that right leg straight down to the mat. And stretch your left leg along with it. And take a deep breath here, just laying on the mat, in and out, breath in and out. Good, we'll re-bend the knees, stand the feet on the ground. Fix the pelvis to be comfortable and then cross left ankle over right knee. Hands on top of thighs, pressing thighs away from you. A little traction. Oh gosh, I just felt a little adjustment in my neck. So see again, can work in one area of the body and then magically it has an effect somewhere else. And then cuddling this shape in. So bringing the figure four in. Remember, you could be propping behind your head. I'm doing that here in case you need to see it. We're holding onto your right leg and we're breathing. It is so common to find a symmetry in the body that one side is tighter than the other. And so as you find that, just offering that information so that you don't become alarmed by what you find, but it's just information. You know, it's how your body's processing all of its experiences, the joys and the sorrows. All of it lives in our body. Couple of breaths here. Gently release that right foot back to the mat. Go ahead and stretch the left leg up. You can roll the ankle, move the knee a bit. And then we're going to lower that left leg straight down onto the mat. Stretch your right leg along with it. If you have something under your head, you're going to remove that from on your knee. Reach the arms overhead. Stretch the legs long. Big stretch. 
And then exhale, both knees in to the chest for a happy baby. Now grab the shins and just open the knees at first so that this could be the happy baby where you're just holding on to the shins and opening the groin. If it's accessible, you're going to reach up to grab the feet. So whichever way you've organized this pose, take a couple of moments to just feel the thighs opening to the sides of the body, the knees kind of dropping down towards the armpits and the soles of the feet or to the ceiling or hugging the shins. I like to do a little rocking here. This comforts my lower back. Let's see if that feels good for you. Okay, one more good breath here. Exhale, if you're holding the feet, release. If you're holding the shins, release the feet to the mat, everybody. Take a breath. We're gonna reach the right arm overhead past the ear. And then we're gonna reach the left arm overhead past the ear. And keep the arms overhead, reaching back behind you. Root the feet down into the ground, hip distance apart. Lift the hips up towards the sky. A little bridge pose here. Height is less important than just lifting and feeling a little bit of opening through that upper back and neck. And then you're going to lower the back all the way down until the hips rest back down onto the ground. And reach the arms straight up for the ceiling, fingertips towards the ceiling, and then lower the arms by your side. We're going to reach the right arm up to the ceiling and past your ear. At the same time, lift your hips up off the ground. Right arm is up past your ear, hips lift up. Then you're gonna lower your hips and your arm all the way down and turn your head to the left as far as it'll go. Bring your head back to the center and lift hips and right arm up. Hips lower, arm lowers, head turns to the left. Head to the center, hips high, right arm past the ear, breathe in. Exhale to lower arm and hips, turn head to the left. One more time, head to the center, lift hips and arm up. And lower hips and arm head to the left as far as it'll go. You can even press your right hand down to turn your head a little further. And then bring everything back to the center. We're going to do that the other side. So it's now hips and left arm reaching up overhead. Hips lower, left arm lowers, head to the right. You know, it's a lot of coordination, so just do your best here. Head center, hips high, left arm past your ear. Hips and arm lower, head turns to the right. Two more times like this. Head center, lift everything up. Exhale, lower arm, hips turn, head to the right. Remember that left hand can press down into the ground to help your head turn a little bit. Last time, head center. Lift your hips, left arm up. And lower arm, hips, turn head to the right. Relax your jaw. Bring it back through the center. Both arms and hips lift up one more time. Both arms overhead, hips high, stretching through that upper back. And exhale, lower it all the way down. Pause, breathe here, notice. Kick your hips up and shift them a little bit to the left. And then you're going to roll onto your right side, a little fetal position. Let your arm be your pillow for a moment. 
Take a breath there. And then you'll press your way all the way up. And we're gonna come onto hands and knees, especially if you have delicate kneecaps or um, any sensitivity in your knees, you'll put a blanket across the mat and put your knees on it while you're kneeling. And so take your time to set this up, coming to your hands and your knees. We're gonna, go, we're gonna go super slow here. So we're gonna start with the pelvis. Tuck the pelvis under, tuck the tailbone under. Your belly will start to round. Your shoulders start to puff. Press your hands down, drop your head down as the last thing to move into cat pose. Move the tailbone first. So lift the tailbone up, the belly drops down. The chest starts to sink, the shoulders draw together, and the chin lifts with the gaze. Cow pose. Start with the hips. The tailbone tucks under. That affects the lower back, middle back, upper back, and head. Tailbone lifts, belly descending down, shoulders shrugging back, chin lifting. And keep moving back and forth here a few times, rounding. And lengthening, and so again, bringing blood flow, warmth, and all your attention to this area of the body, the spinal column. Keeping your jaw and tongue relaxed. Softness through the eyes. Next time your belly is down, bring the feet together, open the knees apart, use any props you need to come to child's pose. So just figuring that out, whether you need a prop underneath your belly, head, or behind your thighs. Just resting down for a few breaths. Take your time here, breathing in and breathing out. Your third eye, the forehead, resting down onto the mat, opening your portal of intuition and wisdom to earth energy, your earth wisdom. Our bodies are part of nature. So nature connecting with the elements of nature outside of our body can be so healing. Water, breathing in fresh air, gazing out at the beautiful trees or the sky. Looking at the moon. Walking barefoot in the grass. These are all just ways to connect the nature of our bodies to the nature of the world. A few more breaths here. All right, so rise up onto your hands and knees. And we're gonna take the knees all the way together here. And then rock a little weight into your hands and lift your feet and shins off the ground. So this is why I wanted you to have some cushion. Uh, you're gonna lift your feet and your knees and you're gonna swivel your feet to the right, put them back down on the ground, and then look past your right shoulder to see your feet. You'll get a stretch on the left side of the body, I think. I do, I hope you feel that. And bring your head and your legs all back to the center. And we're gonna do it to the other side. Lift the feet and shins, swivel the feet over to the left and look past your left shoulder to see your feet. And breathe into the right side. And then bring everything back to the center. 
and lift the shins to swivel to the right. Look over in that direction. Bring everything to the center. Legs left, head left. Everything to the center. One more time each side. Legs to the right, eyes and head to the right. Legs to the center, head to the center. Legs left and head left. Beautiful, come back through the center. Open the knees apart, tuck your toes under, and before you go anywhere, just press a little weight into your feet, stretch the underside of your feet and toes. It's kind of getting the soles of the feet to open up. Breathing into the soles of the feet. Good, and then bring the weight even with the legs, with the toes tucked under. I'm gonna offer that you can either do a modified down dog or a full down dog. So modified down dog is to bring the arms forward and to drop the head down with the hips up. And a full down dog is to lift the knees off the ground and put the weight in the legs, making an upside down letter V. So whichever your choices are, the full down dog or the modified down dog, Drop into the choice. Breathe into the experience. Where in the body does this illuminate sensation? And that invites you deeper into the practice. Couple more breaths in your pose of choice. And then we're gonna come back down to a child's pose. So the knees come down, they open apart, the feet come together, the hips shift back, and you settle your head down onto the ground or onto your prop of choice. Can feel good sometimes just to stack the fists and rest your forehead on your fists. That's another option. Take a few breaths with awareness in the belly the belly as it expands between the thighs and as it contracts beautiful everyone deep breathing in child's pose Gonna take an inhale to rise back up onto our hands and knees. And as we make our way to standing, I'm gonna invite you to do so through a down dog. If down dog is not in your practice, you can get there any way that's safe for you. But if you're doing the down dog, you're tucking the toes and lifting the hips. Shifting that blanket out from underneath you. And we'll all walk the feet towards the hands, setting our weight onto the legs, little bent knees, hands to your hips, and rise all the way to stand. Just getting yourself set in a standing posture, Tadasana, arms by your side, head over, center of the shoulders, Feeling that line all the way down to the tailbone and then through the legs, down through the feet. Taking a moment to feel the mat or the floor beneath your feet. And centering your weight between the right leg and the left leg. On an inhale, circle the arms all the way up overhead. As you exhale, standing forward fold. Welcome to bend the knees as you fold. Drop the head. Inhale, lift halfway. Put your hands on your shins, lengthen the spine. 
Exhale, fold the body down. Inhale, rise to stand, reaching the arms up overhead, and then bring the hands together at the heart. Exhale. Inhale, reach the arms out and up. Exhale, standing forward fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise, arms reach up. Exhale, the hands to the heart center. Take your time and move through this a few times through, right? Reaching up on the inhale, folding on the exhale. I'm gonna keep doing it, so if you get lost, you can certainly glance at me and join me. Otherwise, take it at a pace that works for your body and your breath. Even though you're home in your house, practicing either by yourself or maybe with one other person, we can feel into and acknowledge all the people that are here joined in this video practice. Inhale. So again, acknowledging the individuality and also the interconnectedness. Let's go through this one more time. When you are finished with your sun salutation, remain standing. With the hands at the heart, close the eyes and take a moment to feel the effects of that movement, of that salutation. So I'm just going to turn to face the screen here, but I'm going to bring the feet together for a little balancing pose. Palms stay connect, connected at the heart. You're going to stand on your right leg and just lift your left heel off the ground so you feel that the weight transfers to that right leg. Then swivel that left knee open. And you can stay here with the toes just touching lightly on the ground and the heel against your ankle. Or you can bring the leg higher. I'm gonna use my hand to actually help get that foot nice and high on the thigh, but this is certainly the most challenging version of the pose, toes on the ground. It's also a legit tree pose. And then we're going to take the arms out to the side, shoulder height. And I'm going to invite you to imagine that we're all holding hands. That all of us that are here together in this practice are holding hands. So we're sending energy to those that are struggling with the balance. We're connecting to the strength, and the community. We're opening our hearts for healing ourselves and for all beings that are suffering in this moment at this time. We can give that prayer out to those in need because we're connecting to our inner strength. Be strong inside of ourselves allows us to offer prayers of healing for others. All right, try to keep your hands out as you bring that right leg, left leg all the way back down. 
sorry, it's my right leg, it's your left. Okay, now release the arms and just breathe. Hmm. Palms back together at the heart, feel the pressing of the hands, the coming to the center line of your body. You shift the weight into your left leg and the right heel lifts, right? The toes can still be on the ground as you feel that weight shift and you get kind of centered over that left leg. The knee turns out and the toes can be on the ground. The whole time the toes can be on the ground, right? This can be a tree that is just budding in the springtime. Or you can bring that leg up, which for me, I'm gonna grab the ankle to, to help me get it there. Right? Maybe you just bring the foot to the calf. And then if balance is with you, we're trying to open those arms up again. So many things can affect our balance. So attempting to be free of any harsh judgment on what's happening for you. We're reaching the arms out. We're sensing one another as if we're holding hands. An open heart. Leave the arms out if you can as you lower that right leg all the way back down. Just take a moment to stand tall with two feet on the ground and reach those arms out. Just stretching those arms as far out as you can. We're going to now envelop not just those of us who are in this class in this moment, but we're going to hold all beings everywhere. Let's connect. Take a few deep breaths. And then bringing gently the palms together at the heart. Palms land at the heart, just allow the chin to bow. And a deep breath in and out. Beautiful, so if you've shifted at all, you're gonna step back to the top of your mat or top of your space. Take a deep breath in, reach the arms overhead. On the exhale, fold forward. Bend your knees so that you can put your hands on the ground. We're heading to our belly. If you want to get there a different way than I'm doing, it's okay. I'm just going to step back and lower my knees. You could be doing a down dog, right? You could take a few moments just to have some fun. And then I'm going to go directly to the belly. So I'm going to just lower myself down and lengthen myself out. Rocking the pelvis, I'm lifting one leg and lengthening it, then lifting the other leg and lengthening it. Slide the elbows forward, the forearms pressing into the ground. Little sphinx pose here, tops of feet onto the ground. Hook the lower belly in, lengthen out of the lower back. So if there's any pinching, try a little more strength in the legs by squeezing the thighs or try walking the elbows forward. Relax your jaw, gaze down the bridge of the nose. We'll stay here for a few moments. If this is too much, right, you can at any time lower yourself to rest the chin on the hands. It'll still be a little bit, bit of a back bend. It'll just be really mild and gentle. So if that's what you need today, please take it. Again, focusing on the breathing helps to keep your mind present on the practice on the task at hand. Good. Everybody open the elbows, make a little pillow for your head or chin with your hands and rest a little bit flatter here. You can rock your pelvis right and left, especially if your lower back feels tender. Mm -hmm. oh, I 
more breath. Bring your forehead onto the mat, bring your hands underneath your shoulders. And press your hands and knees into the ground, come up to your hands and knees, tabletop position. And a few moments to cat and cow. And just to nurture that lower back. Good, coming back to a neutral spine. We're gonna shift around to sit. Go ahead and get comfortable. We'll take a cross leg position. Whichever leg feels good for you to cross in front. Just take the hands to the lap and sit up tall. Lengthening the spine, we'll reach the arms up overhead. Breath in, feel your sitting bones root down, press down. And you're gonna twist to the right, exhale. Bring your left hand to your knee, your right hand behind you for some support, fingers into the ground, helping you to lengthen the spine. And without force, just turning the chin, breathing into your rib cage. Connecting with your breath, use an inhale, even if you have to wait a cycle. Breathe in to come through the center, reaching the arms up overhead. And breathing out to twist in the other direction. Again, without force, you're turning the head as far as it'll go. Freedom in the hips, so you're letting the pelvis kind of do whatever it naturally wants to do as you take the twist. In other words, that right hip might feel like it lifts a little or comes forward a little, that's okay. On an inhale, you're lifting back through the center. On the exhale, twist again to the right. Maybe again, that left hip has a little freedom. Maybe it wants to come forward. Inhale through the center. You'll exhale the other side. Inhale through the center. We're doing it one more time each side. Exhale to your right. Inhale through the center. Exhale to the left. Inhale through the center. And exhale, palms to the heart. Beautiful, everyone. All right, we're going to take the legs out. And we're going to start with opening the legs wide, but having the knees bent. And the feet are kind of standing on the ground, although my toes don't like completely touch. I don't know if you can see that in the picture. All right, there's a lightness to the toes. And I just have space here. Yeah, I'm kind of sitting up tall and snuggling those um, pokey bones at the base of your butt, your sitting bones, we call those, into the ground, right? Yeah, you may need a little support from behind you. I see some people doing that if you need that, right? Otherwise, you're kind of hugging out to the knees and feel the stretch here, yeah. So if it's enough, you're going to fold forward and just kind of lean your head down. Your arms can slide on your own shins. 
If that doesn't feel like it's interesting or doing much, you can straighten the legs out, but that's just really a whole lot more challenging. So, like whichever version you deem best for you in this moment, whether those knees stay bent, there's something interesting about that shape, or the legs go straight. I'm gonna stick with bent knees today. There's my dog working at the mailman. Hang that head as much as you can. Allow yourself to fall into the fold. Notice if you're holding back in any way. Maybe it's an involuntary hold, right? It's the tension in your body, involuntarily tightening. So you're seeking to sort of override the system and clear the tension, clear the trauma. Stay up for three more breaths here. Carefully lifting yourself back up. Walk the feet back in towards one another. You can just hook the hand and sit there for a moment. Notice. I'm gonna do one more stretch for the shoulders today. So come to a comfortable position, whether you're sitting on your um, bottom still, or if you want to shift onto your shins, whatever is best for you. I'm going to stay here on my seat. All right, I'll be your mirror. You're going to take your right arm out ahead of you, and you're going to make a fist. And it's just going to be straight out ahead of you. And you're going to reach that arm all the way up to the ceiling. And then before you start going anywhere, if you try to move your arm back, it gets stuck, yeah? So before you move the arm back, I want you to rotate the fist all the way around away from you and then let your arm go back and you're trying to do this without moving your torso so it's going to take some experimenting you're going to reach your arm forward and up and then as you're moving it back you're also turning your fist and right about here when i get to here i have to turn it even more turn that fist all the way down to the ground I'm gonna come closer just so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm reaching the arm out, and then as it goes up, I'm turning the fist away from me, and I'm letting my shoulder turn in so that I turn it down. You can feel how the shoulder blade kind of compresses down the back, and then you reach it up, and you turn the fist, and you bring it down. Good, let's try that with the other arm, so just shake that right arm out if you need to for a moment i'm coming closer here i think this is a good position reach that left arm out ahead of you with a fist right and you're reaching the arm up and then you're turning the fist away and then as you go back you have to turn the fist even more and again you're going to butt up against yes yeah, some shoulder tension you're going to butt up against if you've had shoulder injuries right and these are things you want to be really delicate with the movement you could bend the elbow if you had to, right? How can you modify it? Yeah, good. Exactly. I'm looking at you on the screens, everybody. Perfect. Yeah. We're trying not to force, but definitely can be interesting. One last time on this side. Good. Rest your hands on your lap. And we're gonna move the head around a little bit. So again, I'm gonna come nice and close to the screen for this. This is sort of specific. Yeah, we're gonna take the chin to the chest, drop it down. And then you're gonna draw across your right collarbone with your chin. Draw your chin over to that right shoulder. 
Then you're gonna turn your right ear all the way down to the shoulder, which turns your chin essentially up towards the ceiling. And then you're gonna bring your head across the back, swing it over to the left, bring your left ear to your left shoulder, then bring your chin all the way to the shoulder, then draw the line across your collarbone and come back to the center. All right, again, draw the collarbone to the right, turn the ear as far as it'll go, and then you can bring the head back safely. You can even hear my voice that it really very, only a very little bit changes the quality of my voice. I sweep it over to the left, ear to shoulder, chin to shoulder, chin to the center of my chest. One more time in this direction, chin to the right shoulder, ear to the right shoulder, head to the back, head to the other side, ear, chin, and chest. We're gonna go the other way now. So taking the chin to the left shoulder, taking the ear to that shoulder, really rotate it, yes, then bring your head back across to the other side, it's ear to shoulder, chin to shoulder, chin to chest. We're doing two more times in this direction. Chin to shoulder, ear to shoulder, head around the back, ear to shoulder, chin to shoulder. Oh, so many creaks and cracks in there. Chin to chest, last time. Chin to shoulder. Ear to shoulder, head across the back. Ear to shoulder, chin to shoulder, chin to chest. Lift your head upright and just take a moment to breathe there. If you need to shrug your shoulders a little bit, it can feel good. Yeah. So that's a lot of movement in the head. Right in yoga, we say, um, that we're opening up the channel of the, the between the head and the heart. Our lower three chakras, our earth elements, are really nature bound, and our upper chakras are connected to the universal, the oneness, the ethereal senses, and that we're bringing the two together. The two come together right at the heart, and we're hoping to act in our lives from our heart center. So we clear the pathway through the shoulders and the neck. All right, gonna invite you to lay down on your back now. And uh, we're gonna come back to where we began with the bottoms of the feet together, the, the, the knees apart. And you are welcome to work with a bolster again, but I'm gonna do it without this time around because we've kind of warmed the whole body. So I think we could be ready to just lay on your back with the bottoms of the feet. Well, let me fix my screen so you can see me again. Good. Bottoms of the feet together, knees apart. And if your shoulders will allow, you'll take the arms overhead and grab hands to opposite elbows. If the shoulders don't feel comfortable doing this, then take your arms in a different way, maybe opening them wider or just bringing them down by your side. We're gonna lay back here for a few minutes. So just know that I haven't left you, but I do wanna give you some Moments of silence to be just in the pose. So I think this time in our lives is, is, is challenging for some in that we're asked to be potentially, you know, more still, more sedentary than usual, and that stillness can be very uncomfortable. I'm offering these moments, this time in the practice to just check in with yourself. How do you feel about the stillness? Is it a welcome respite for you? Or do you feel a bit like a caged lion? How is the stillness affecting your body, your psychological state? Your emotional state. 
without judging what comes up. Just being present to it. you're home alone, living alone, then it may be affecting you in a unique way. If you're home with family, children, you may notice that how the stillness is affecting them also, their reactions affect you. So many elements, so many layers. You're holding your elbows. See if you can cross and hold the opposite elbow formation, if that even makes sense. Let the breath be really natural. Allow the breath to settle. The arms are overhead. Let's take a few moments to release them down by your side. Use the hands to bring the knees back together. Hug the legs in towards the chest, grabbing thighs or shins, squeeze the legs in. Rock a little bit through that lower back. We'll take both knees over to the left. Open your right arm out to the side. Couple of breaths in the twist. Knees and head back through the center. And take the knees to the other side. Knees right, left arm opening up. Everything coming back to the center. Any last stretches or poses that you need, take a moment with it. If 
there's a happy baby again. Or any stretch your body needs. Next pose will be Shavasana. So getting cozy with any sweaters, layers, props, if you need. You could use the bolster again for your legs, kind of draping your legs over your couch pillow or bolster. Laying yourself back onto the mat with either blankets or pillows underneath your head. I'm gonna sit up while you lay down. So in case you peek at me and you wonder if Shavasana is over, it's not quite yet over. I'll ring my Tibetan bowl here to wake you. You'll hear the ringing three times. And at the end of the third one, I'll cue you to begin moving again. So Shavasana is the pose of stillness. Once again, an opportunity to embrace the stillness and to soften your awareness and senses outside of yourself to feel more deeply connected to the inside, the inner atmosphere, the inner being. Perhaps an opportunity to take a glimpse at your true self. How do we do this? We do this by resting. All the muscles, the bones, and the skin relaxing. Bringing the mind to stillness along with the body.
out, moving, take a deep breath, in and out. And then allow the toes and the fingers, the ankles and the wrists to take some movements, small at first, growing larger as you stretch the arms overhead, the legs away from you. Allowing the knees to bend in towards the chest. You can stand the feet on the ground or give them a hug. Rocking side to side. And then rocking all the way onto one side as you make your way back up to sit. Feel yourself sitting for a moment to feel the quality of your breath, how it may be different from when you began. Hopefully you feel a little bit more connected to the earth, connected to your body, as we say, grounded. Gently bringing the palms together at the heart to place any and all Final prayers for yourself or for others. Acknowledging this time together, practicing what a privilege it is to be able to practice yoga. So we trust that we have received what we needed from this practice and can offer the merits of our work to the world at large. May all beings experience peace, joy, love, and light. Close with a gentle om D breath in. Oh. Recognition of the light. Namaste. Namaste.